Hello. <clears throat> so, welcome to online art class. This is my first video, and I'm making myself a YouTube channel. Be very interesting, only for these. So, you can follow my YouTube channel if you'd like, but it's going to be pretty boring. I might be doing some drawings for art for high school art class too. But anyway. So you guys were um, in the middle of the project uh, when we went on spring break, and we're not gonna <laughs> finish that project, obviously, but I still want you to do some things with real texture. So um, for real texture at home, um, this project, you're gonna need three pieces of paper, just regular, how do I zoom back? There we are three pieces of paper. Uh, one is going to be your final paper that you're going to be doing or collecting all of your textures on. And then the other ones, um, you're going to be either cutting it up into making textures to glue onto the other page um, or going around and kind of collecting textures uh, by rubbing um, and poking and whatnot on it for the other one. So um, if you are not efficient, at doing it, um, meaning neat and tidy, like have one texture here and one texture there, or whatever. Uh, you might need more pieces of paper than the three. And a pencil, just at the beginning to write stuff down. Uh, a pair of scissors. Glue, I prefer a glue stick. Um, otherwise, you can use liquid glue. Hmm. That looks sufficiently dry, doesn't it? Maybe. Maybe um, you can use tape if you um, if you have to, but I um, don't like tape because it's hideous. But um, this is just a project for you to get done and make texture. So if you have to use tape because that's what you have at home, um, by all means, go ahead and do that. Uh, I also have a pair of pinking shears. This is from my sewing room. I have a cool edge on it. If you have any cool edge scissors, that might be helpful too. All right, so that's the things you're gonna need. So to set up our final page, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw about a half inch border around the outside edge. All right, um, no rulers, no rulers. Do a very neat and tidy job. If I can change this so you can see what I'm doing. I'll show you what I'm at, at the end. But uh, keeping an eye on the edge of my page so that I'm drawing parallel with it, just doing the best job that I can, rotating the paper. Do this bottom edge, just eyeballing about a half an inch. The other side. Went a little too far. That's okay. That's okay. All right, so I have about a half an inch border around the outside of my paper. I'm now gonna divide this into nine blocks, which is like two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, like a giant tic-tac-toe. Again, I'm just going to eyeball that. It just has to be something close, and I just wanna make sure that I'm kind of drawing it parallel and not going too diagonal sideways crazy. Just taking my time and doing a tidy job. Divide this into three. This section is going to be a little tall and that's fine. Okay, so there we go. Uh, not perfect. <laughs> this line kind of dives down here, but that's fine. Uh, I just want nine sections. You're going to make nine textures or gather nine textures. I'm also going to put my name in the border so that I know whose it is. In the border. Got that? There we are. All right, so now I'm going to need some textures. I do have some examples for you guys. First thing I'm going to do is this sheet in half. Okay. 
I'm going to make some strips here. I'm just kind of making up my textures as I go. I think I have an idea. I kind of want to do some that are rolls. I kind of want to do some that are bumps. I kind of want to do some that are wavy. Anyway. So here I am. So I have... You just can't see what I'm doing. I'm using a napkin holder as my... I need to like have this like... Right up underneath. Hey, look. It's cold out. And my cactus. My mom brought that back from... Oh, this is a Christmas cactus. My other plant. I forget the name of that one. And a drawing of a radish. All right. All right. I think I'm going to have to try and figure out how to move this so you can see what I'm doing. So I have taken one piece of paper. I cut it in half. And then I cut a few strips. Some of these strips, and you can tell I've just done a whatever kind of job. I'm going to divide this into four pieces. In each one of these four pieces, I'm going to crumple up into this, right? Okay? And make kind of a texture with these little, little lumps. I took my pinking shears and I cut a few more strips of paper. This is for my, that half a sheet, the sheet that I cut in half, right? Just cutting some strips across, trying to keep them of same thickness. And my plan with them, I think, is I think I'm going to fold them in half like this and somehow glue them on in like a snaky kind of way to have like this zigzag te texture st sticking up. Okay. Um, some of these I plan on rolling up. This other little piece here, I'm going to roll this one up. And I'm going, I have a toothpick here that I'm rolling it around because I can't tuck it very well, kind of just slightly at a diagonal. And I'm going to roll this up into like a long skinny thing. The rest of this I'm going to cut into some squares and kind of like mold them in little cups around my finger. Um, I'm going to do this in time lapse. So I only get um, 20 minutes to uh, do a quick video, um, but um, just like a regular art class is 45 minutes. I do expect you to work for a little while after the video is over or to stop the video if you need to. But I'm going to put it into time lapse so you can see uh, what I do here uh, somewhat quickly. Okay, so now I have several things here to make textures on my, to glue down to my paper. But I just thought that before I glue these things down, I'm just going to scoot things around here. Before I glue these things down, I want to um, kind of make some textures in the actual piece of paper itself. Um, I want to make some textures in this paper. So 
what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I have a toothpick here, um, or a thumbtack, or an ink pen, maybe a pencil tip, and I'm going to poke up from the back side and create a texture that you can feel in this. Now I could do I could do like a couple of rows. So right now I have it just being just kind of like random textures, random polka dots, nice and evenly evenly spaced up to the edges. Trying my wanting to stay within my border here and not trying to tear my paper apart. Um, so I can do them evenly. I could make I could try to do them in strips. I'm just gonna flip this upside down here because it's easier to poke this way. I'm going to do a stripe, a couple of stripes of them. I could do circles of them, kind of like polka dots. Oops, that was kind of a little too close. I tore my paper. <laughs> You can see here on the bottom I kind of did polka dot patches. Here I did stripes and at the top here I did um, kind of some random stuff. Something else I can do is if I gently fold my paper, see I have not creased it very much. I don't want to actually like bend a crease here, but if I have this crease do even snips across it. I'm going to bend it here. Again, not, not creasing it, just kind of bending it. This is some kind of offsetting. And my snips are the same size, like some aren't long and some aren't short. And I mean, there's various ways you could do this at various, I mean, you could do it at steep angles, you could do it at uh, very skinny angles. I'm doing it in rows, you could do it randomly, or you could try and do it in a circle or something. This is when I'm done with it, it's kind of going to look like scales, I think, I'm hoping. Anyway, that's good enough, we'll get the idea. And then I can bend these up. Okay, to give a neat texture. Uh, if I had a hole punch, I could do cool things with hole punches and punching out holes. Um, again, bending the paper slightly. This time I am going to do, I'm going to do what I saw on one of those examples, this like cool wavy line thing. Gonna, I can uh, you can also use the scissors to start little places so I just have little starts and now I can come in and cut little textures and some of them I want kind of going the other way too so you have that you get that idea And I will finish those out so that you can see them. I um, now have these things that I cut out. These were little strips, little circles. I will be able to glue these down. Here are these little bumps. These were the strips of paper that I tore, the rectangles that I tore down. I think I want to make more of those because I don't think I have enough of those. I think I can space out these circles and make them look 
cool in here and fill up my rectangle pretty good. I might need to make a couple more of those so that I fill up my paper pretty well. And these, I care mostly that they that your texture is even throughout. So if I spread these around, that would be fine. Or if I was doing something with them, like grouping them together, you know, I could kind of group them together somehow and glue those down as well to kind of make that lumpy texture. Um, I think these are, I want to do something with those a little different with my scissors. I kind of want to glue these down in my patches. I'm going to snip them shorter. I mean, you could use them totally long if you want to use these little things long. I just want you to experiment with making three-dimensional textures on your paper. starburst like an explosion anyway all right um, these that I had cut with my zigzag scissors um, and made little cups I'm going to glue those down as well these zigzags I'm going to put these strips of paper that I zigzagged oh, I could do I could either, I haven't done anything like Ripley, like you could glue it on here and like make it, oh man, we, can't do that. we need to do that, that seems like that'd be fun. Okay. This is too wide though. I think it's too wide for what I want to do. Nine seems like a lot until you get into it, and then you're like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, this would be easy to do. So far, I've still only used one sheet of paper. Um, I am going to fold this accordion style. Like you've all been there, done that when you've been bored, right? These are tiny zigzags. that on there. The idea, I'm going to uh, glue some of these down and then I will also show you another technique um, for taking a piece of paper and making some rubbings around uh, from your house from different things. I got some baskets and hair brushes and all kinds of stuff.
So here we are at a vent in my floor. It has some definite texture to it. Um, what I like about this is that it's metal and it's very strong. Um, so it's not going to bend under the pressure of rubbing on it. So I kind of already practiced a little bit here. Hmm. I wonder how I can do this while holding the phone. So um, I'm just using the back of my scissors because this is kind of narrow. I could also use my um, pencil eraser here, but I've laid my paper on top of my vent. And I am just going to try and rub into these areas to kind of crease my paper. You can hear my paper creasing. All right, another option. Um, so what, what this does is this gives you a definite, let me see this in the light, and there we are. There's definitely a texture here. It's not the most super fantastic. Um, another option is to, with the side of your pencil, sorry else I have this colored pencils at home, I don't have a regular pencil, except for the mechanical pencil which would not work for this. Um, laying again your paper down on the something that has texture, in this case a metal vent. What is off screen? There we are. I want to use the side of my pencil because if I use the tip of my pencil I might actually like poke through my paper and I don't want that so I want to be using the side of my pencil. You can actually definitely see the texture there. Um, you might actually be able to feel some of the texture as well, but not as much as if you just use your pencil eraser or back of your um, scissors and actually push down on some things. I'm going to go around to some random objects around my house and do this on a few different things. This is on um, one of my spare pieces of paper. Um, so when you do this, you do want to make sure that you get enough area that you'll be able to cut this out and glue this on. So I don't think this was enough area. If I try to reposition it, it's not ever going to line up again. Anyway, so I'll talk about that later. This is a basket by my fireplace. Um, it has a little bit of give to it. So it would not work well for me to rub with my eraser on it because it doesn't... Um, it doesn't create a good texture because this is too soft, right? Um, so I will use the side of my pencil here. Again, trying to get enough big enough area. Hmm. That one's kind of lame. This is a baby gate. And although this is sturdy enough that I would be able to use my eraser on it, the pattern is so large that uh, I don't think it would work well. My pencil might poke through it. So I'm going to try and do a rubbing, and I'm kind of going to do a rubbing where I slide it down so it kind of creates a, I don't know, a cool wave. I'm experimenting. I got class at four, doing crazy stuff, right? the top half of this is where I just uh, simply rubbed the pattern where it was and then this bottom half 
I was scooting the paper up, so I was kind of rubbing the same area over again to kind of get this repeated funky shape. Looks like little repeated mountains or something. Hmm. Anyway, I think my baby's waking up. So here I am in the kitchen. This is my baby's shelf. <laughs> we, we have a colander here. It has some nice, uh, these uh, circles on here. Come across as a nice texture. Again, I'd, I would want to move my paper around enough to get um, enough of this texture to fill up my square. A hairbrush. Let's try that. That should be a decent enough size. focus. All right, so that gives me kind of a light texture. I have, uh, we have some seashells. It has some nice ridge texture there. This is an old coin purse from my great grandma. That's going to have some fantastic texture on it. Here I have a basket. I'll be able. I could be able to rub that texture nicely. And uh, oh, bubble wrap. I don't know if that'd be too soft or not. Worth a try. Pumpkin. It's got some ridges. So uh, just whatever you find. If you want to do some texture rubbings, again, make sure that you get uh, an area about. Uh, two and a half inches, two inches, two and a half inches by three inches so that it is big enough so that you can cut it out and glue it onto your final paper. All right, so I have my paper here. This is some of my texture rubbings that I had done. I went ahead and cut out this piece a little bit bigger than what I thought I would need, and now I'm going to trim it a little bit more. It's always easier to cut out your stuff bigger and to trim it than to cut it out too small. Looks like I still need to trim that down a little bit. Alright, so I have that one. trimmed to that one but that's okay okay so I will go ahead and glue these down all right and there I am done here is my final project. So I poked holes, I snipped some texture here, I made some crazy grass-like texture, I don't know what you would call that, if it's grass or just whatever. Uh, these little circles that I glued down, some, here I have two textures in the same box just as an example for you guys to see multiple different textures. 
these are the little bumps again trying to glue them um, evenly throughout uh, the little rolls which could easily be done like wouldn't it be cool if they were like all just long rolls diagonal all the way across or you could do them um, like brickwork you could um, basket weave them you could do all kinds of interesting things with that um, the one thing I didn't do on this was to um, stack paper up I saw in one of them where they stacked stacked paper up and kind of like got a thickness that way with the stacked paper that'd be kind of cool too um, these are again were little paper cups that I just made a little cup by smushing them on top of my thumb this was some paper strips that I had cut with my pinking shears um, and kind of glued on in a zigzag fashion. This was some accordion stuff that I made a little zigzag like this and then put glue along some of the ridges and then glued that down. And this was some texture rubbings that I did. Um, this was the baby gate and this was my great grandma's little coin purse, the little funky blue and yellow polka dot thingy. So the main thing here is that this has a lot of physical texture. This guy, this guy just likes to escape, doesn't he? After we glue those down. Anyway, uh, so this has a lot of different textures to feel and that's what I'm going for. The texture rubbings, I can feel these bumps on here. It is a much subtler thing. This one I can't hardly feel. Um, where I did my air grate, I can definitely feel that. So that's what I'm going for, is for a texture that I can feel on the paper, even if it is something that is very subtle. Okay, I still want it to be something that I can feel. So rub your fingers across it and make sure you can feel it. Um, so that is the project. Nine different textures. Um, as different as possible is what I'm going for. Um, yep, take a photo of it when you guys are done. Um, right now this is, I don't know if you notice there's a lot of high contrast here. I'm actually sitting next to my window um, so that there's kind of like a lot of side light. Um, it creates a lot of um, dramatic shadows and makes it look extra cool um, versus if I was in a, a, an evenly well lit bright room the whole thing would look mostly just white. So anyway, uh, that's the project for this week. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in comments um, below. I typically will um, check my email and check comments um, between two and three o'clock, two and three o'clock, which would be like our regular class time every day. That is when um, my baby naps, so that's when I've got time. <laughs> um, so uh, just send me an email if you guys have any questions, or write, like I said, write a comment. And I hope you guys had fun uh, making a mess and making texture out of just a couple of sheets of paper. Again, I only used three sheets of paper and I still have uh, plenty of paper left over. But uh, like I said, I'm probably a bit more efficient. You guys might um, need up to four or five sheets of paper, depending on how efficient that you are or what kind of texture. Some of your textures need a lot of paper. These textures here didn't take any extra paper. Whereas the rolled and the zigzag probably takes more paper. Uh, this didn't take a whole lot of paper. Um, anyway, it just depends on what you choose and what you come up with. Uh, whatever you, uh, your imagination can think of. Alright, have fun and I will talk to you guys next week.